All right, everybody, <laughs> welcome in to All right, everybody, a rather welcome. surprising show match here. Definitely wasn't playing on this one. Anime still having desktop audio on. That's okay. No big deal. I'm not crying or anything. Um, Got Thero in the booth with me. Thero, how Uh-oh. you doing? What's up, Saren? Yeah, you know, a drug out uh, early evening on the East Coast uh, for this awesome matchup. I'm pretty excited for it. It's been a while since I've seen some SMO head-to-head action. Excited to see it here on CCG tonight. I love Benny. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> so we got Edvi, Ed Sveti in the booth. We're not going to spend too much time on the uh, introduction since we are a little bit late. Uh, Kind of last minute scheduling. We we're planning to start about 25 minutes ago, and Anime has to go to sleep soon. So we're going to get into it. Anime, Spetty, are you ready? Uh, Close. I'm very close. Uh, <laughs> I was changing the audio settings for you, and now it's like. Yeah, I think I'm ready. For me? Oh, I'm changing the wrong thing because I'm dumb. There we go. Okay. I have desktop audio turned off, and you should be able to hear everything now. Oops. Let's Sorry. go. <laughs> you are fine. Uh, yeah, I should be ready now. All right. Yeah, I think I'm good too. You can go cool. ahead and ready up in the race time lobby whenever you're ready. And good luck. Have fun on your race. Good hey, luck, good luck, guys. Good luck. All right. So taking a look right now, looks like uh, enemies PB 114.55, uh, Sweetie's PD 110.05. I, I still think it's going to be a, a pretty interesting matchup. You know, uh, I know that this is the same division that you're in. You're you're in the same bracket, right, Taryn? Yes. So I mean, like you know, when when you're around these times, like I almost like these races way better than like you know high 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 level races. The reason why is because you really it comes down to whoever can back up whatever quickest, right? So whenever mistakes happen, because we know mistakes are going to happen, it's it's who can you know stay calm. Um, stay focused and and make it up at that point. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm going to go from a little bit of a different angle and say I like these races because they are a lot more of a cluster and people die all oh. the time. <laughs> well, see, so so I, I I was I was going the same route. I just presented it in a slightly different fashion. Sarah, but uh, I li- I like they- these brackets because people mess up more. I'm going to be honest. And, and, and I mean that's fair. And that that's okay. I mean that that's a part of speedrunning. Like, you know, consistency is key, and and that's not something that you really have quite yet. Um, so you have to rely on those backups. You, you know, you have to rely on on game knowledge to be able to, um, you know, gain some sort of edge over your competitor. Right now, um, Speedy with the better PB. So I mean, going into this, okay, enemy kind of. Kind of jumping off a little bit there. Uh, that's okay. We're, we're, we're working it out. Uh, but, you know, Anime it, it has a slight uphill battle. But, you know, like mentioned in the chat right now, uh, even though it is a four-minute difference because of where it appears, um, it, it's it's a lot closer than what that four minutes would be, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, four minutes in Super Mario Odyssey is uh, a couple of mistakes. I mean, especially big ones. Like if you're dying like midway through Lost and you have to go all the way through again or you get, get oh, clipped yeah. out or something like that is enemy not capturing the frog like, or trying to skip the cutscene. That is going to be a time loss right there, unfortunately. You know, and uh, I, I've been there. Like you're like spamming the button because you want to catch it, but then you do it slight, excuse me, slightly before the actual um, grab of that frog. Like it. it oh! Spetty Ouch. going for left side there, but not quite uh, making it. Going to be bonking and opening up a little bit of a window opportunity for Enemy here, who is opting to just go oh, for the straight bonk. right side. Yeah, so two bonks there. Oh, but Enemy bonking on right side. No, <laughs> Enemy. <laughs> this is a chance. I mean, he definitely made up some time. For sure. I mean, no. and, and it's... <laughs> enemy. It's, it's those slight optimizations. So, like... You know, going down to 110, 109, 108, that's when you're going to start seeing more things like nut clip. You're going to see, you know, left side like that. You're going to see those slight optimizations that do open the door because they are slightly higher risk than doing those more intermediate or, or lower level strats. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be real. There's a ton of people now going for like nut clip, like in 105 to 110 territory, like a lot more frequently than it used to be. 
Yeah, and you know, some of the advice that I was given when when I was running the game is like, hey, look, don't even look at nut clip until you're like 105. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because uh, I, you know, I I had a 109. Um, granted, that was on um, 1.0, but you know, you you gotta kind of weigh out the the risk versus the reward. Like, if it's something that you feel that you can do consistently, especially the movement after the actual clip itself, yeah, go for it. But you know, in races, it, it's a different mentality than being on your home turf and and going for a PB. Like you're you're not facing yourself; you're you're facing an opponent. So it, it it's about figuring out what strats are going to be best, and, and kind of changing and adapting to that throughout the run. If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it all depends on your play style. Like, I mean, some people go into races and they're like, you know, I'm just going to play my own game, be in my own zone. Some people are just like staring at the screen, like basing their next move off of what the other player is doing. Like, you know, if they're lagging behind, they're a few moons behind or a whole kingdom behind them, it's start trying to do some crazy BTT strats or they might just start, you know, trying to play super consistent to make sure they don't lose any more time. But... I don't know. I think in general, both these players are probably going to be playing their own game. Um, oh my gosh, enemy. Oh, and Speddy misses oh, Dino Speddy. Skip. I, I, looking at it, I was like, man, he is really far away. Um, looks like he just missed that hitbox. Barely. That's not going to work. No way. Oh my gosh, trying to delay that, that dive there to make it work. But enemy taking the lead for the first wow. time here is Speddy. Just cannot make this Dino and Skip work. And the Dino disappears! Yeah, oh my god okay so and, and this is kind of talking about the different types of race mentalities you know this is where playing your own game like is probably a little bit better because you're not focused on somebody else yeah. um you know that anxiety motivates some people but for people like me if i see somebody's ahead i'm like i, I start making really silly mistakes you know what i mean mm -hmm. um mistakes that i wouldn't necessarily make just playing the game Yeah, whenever I'm personally doing a race, I always watch the stream and listen to the commentary, which is probably the worst thing to do <laughs> when racing, honestly. So, oh, yeah. as far as uh, race strategy goes, I'm definitely not the person to go to. Yeah, for, you know, for those of you that don't know, a, a few years ago, Saren actually went through a period of no reset. He refused to reset any run out there. And uh, we were racing SM64. He died like four or five times in Dark World and refused to tell me in the race. And I wasn't watching him, so I had no clue. But, <laughs> you know, I won the race. He he didn't reset, so that's good, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I did get some, like, 45-minute 16-star times within that yeah. uh, within that time period. That was, yeah. that was a good time. That was, that was a uh, an interesting time in the, uh, the Sarah Mew um, uh, story arc, I guess. But, yeah, Enemy, with the lead right now... Um, you know, I'll tell you, Cascade to me is one of those kingdoms that kind of sets momentum, um, at least until you get to Wooded. It, it, five moons, you, you'd think, hey, it's, it's really, really fast. But I mean, there's there's multiple strategies. Looks like um, both of these guys going for the same strategy, the, the moon right there on top of the hill. Uh, but we're going to be leaving now and going into Sand. Now, Sand to me was a big, like, reset point. Um because there are so many like minor optimizations in sand especially now um compared to a few years ago uh sand is when i would really start to kind of get nerves if i can get through sand normally i would have the confidence to to get through the rest of the race but uh we'll see what's coming up for these guys going into sand kingdom yeah this is the the pb range where it's like anything goes in sand we could be seeing like oh, yeah. old school sphinx like get the bird at the oasis type routes or we can yep. see and you know like something crazy modern it, it's it's really just down to how much these players have really looked into their routing how much they're you know following the beginner guides how much they're just free balling it doing stuff they saw online that looks cool that's yeah, another fun part about these these kinds of races well smo is such a new or a newer game right so you know, watching the game evolve over time. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, watching the game evolve over time. Yeah, and, and that's that's one thing to kind of think about, you know, um, whenever Daylight Savings Time Skip was found. Um, it, it really changed the dynamic of Sand specifically because of the timing. 
Sped, is Spedi opting to go for the bird before getting that moon in the church bell area? That is definitely a surprise. Okay. It looked like he he went right through the moon. Like for some reason, he like hit the hitbox that makes the moon spin, but didn't do anything else. Yeah, it looks like doing manual DSTA here. Definitely an interesting option as Anime is waiting for this bird for about 12 years. I definitely would yeah. recommend moving <laughs> the bird before the pipe, Anime. 100%. Um, you know, and, and just seeing <laughs> sand is, is like what you were saying, like just seeing the dynamic of what different people do, how different people do it, and you could go old school with the old, uh, what's that, the, the small ant tutorials. Um, which I think are fine. I mean, you can get down to an hour time with, with the that old movement. I mean, there's plenty of runners who have done that in the past. So it's it's all about comfort. It's all about what you know. It's all about what you you want to do. Yeah, an hour and change. I, I definitely started out playing this game. I, I think I watched the Small Ant tutorial. my first tutorial after the uh, fabled Thero tutorial where he was teaching me how to do spin pound roll cancels before he taught me how to do a sand route. Um, yeah, that's fair. It was the best thing ever. Now Nowadays, I feel like it's definitely best to push people towards Tom G's tutorials. They're just better, more concise, easier to uh, look through, more updated right. strategies. Yeah, Tom, she does, definitely does have a great um, series on a lot of stuff out there, if you haven't checked that out. But yeah, I mean, you know, lo looking in chat right now, you know, um, DSTA is free time save if you're consistent. I mean, you could say that with any speedrun strat, to be honest. Um, consistency is key in speedrunning in, in racing or if you're going for a PB, like, that's just kind of the name of the game. And, and I'll tell you, being in a situation where you're racing in front of people, where you're not just like, you know, you and Saren on a Saturday night after he's had a couple of White Claws. Um, you tend to get a little bit nervous. Like, you, you got the nerves going a little bit, and it takes a little bit to to settle it. Now, Super Mario 64, 16 star, where you're doing a best of three, okay, you can have you can have a, a bad first run. Uh, but in SMO, specifically, where you're doing a run over an hour plus, you don't really have that opportunity. You have to settle in while you're running the game. Uh, enemy is going for reverse Jaxi. <laughs> I see that. That's all I'm going to say. I see that. Oh, enemy, okay. oh, no. Okay, no, he's fine. He's fine. Is he, though? Okay. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. All right. Um, okay, that We're was not dead. That was, that was terrifying. Oh, but um, Smeddy messing up normal Jaxi. Okay, apparently, Jaxi, yeah. apparently reverse Jaxi is the play, according to this race, it is the easier strategy. Yeah, I mean, oh. <laughs> this is a huge opening for enemy right now. Okay, so enemy is one moon down, needs to get this moon, uh, but now with a pretty comfy spot, just needs to break this one block over here, grab another moon. Uh, oh my goodness! Oh no! Nope! 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 Okay. What is even happening? I, I've okay, never he's, seen someone in this location at Speddy's screen that I am looking at right now. Speddy, what are okay? Uh, okay. Oh. We're, we're... We're, pu we're pulling trick jumps out. Is what this we're doing. is actually sick. I'm not going to lie. This is the so, sickest thing I've ever seen in a race. <laughs> Spetty, yeah. what was that? That was awesome. Yeah. That was yeah, so that was... sick. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Spetty apparently has practiced this jump before or is just incredibly resourceful. Jumping over, doing the Jaxi Moon without any sort of bullet bills. Enemy on the way to the Oasis with a one moon lead. This race has been so interesting. <laughs> Is he going to take damage here? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, I, we talked about that even before Sand even started. Like, there's so many different variations. And then being able to back up when you make those mistakes, that's what's crazy. Like, oh, my God. The, oh, the flower. Hey. Let's go. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Definitely not intentional, but that was fun. No, okay. but, I mean, it could be. Oh, oh okay. I, I didn't know if Anime was going to be able to grab that last note. For the moon. This I wasn't is, sure if they're going to have to start over. This is definitely my favorite race of the tournament so far. There's only been two races, including this one, but I think this one's going to be pretty tough to beat at this point. I mean, yeah. we had like three or four lead changes, and we're only in sand. Like, okay, what, what's next? Yeah. Going to Lake. <laughs> lake is fun. Lake is one of those, like, super fast paced. Like, you can blink 
you know, you can go get some popcorn really quick, come back and Lake is already done. So um, it, it is fast paced. There, there are areas for mistakes, but to me, it, it is a little bit of a downtime before heading into Wooded where you kind of have to be on your game a little bit, depending on what strats you decide to use. <clears throat> yeah, I All think right. we'll, we'll definitely see pretty much just the beginner basic Rango route here in Light Kingdom. If we see a late clip, that would be absolutely, I want to say phenomenal, but also kind of ridiculous. Like if you're, if you got a 110 and you're doing late clip, that's, you're, you're kind of crazy. I mean, that's like doing like LBLJ in 16 star when you have a 32 minute time. I, I would say it's probably worse than that, actually. I think I think late clip is like... It's pretty hard, and it's pretty unnecessary at this level. But we'll see it what happens. The enemy gets past the Goomba wall there. Heading over to the zipper. Speddy. Can he defeat the Goomba wall? Right, very, very powerful. See, and... and you know, I know that Tom Shee and a couple of others have kind of played around with camera <laughs> manipulation specifically um, for this part here, um, trying to get Dory to spawn in, in a specific spot. And and as far as I know, nothing's, I mean, I, there is minor camera manipulation there. Speddy going for oh. late clip. Oh my gosh, Speddy going for late clip. Yeah, an enemy yeah. failing Dilly P skip there, bonking right into Dilly P's nose. That was a little bit unfortunate. Speddy! Gets late clip so far. <laughs> okay. All right. Sveti has oh, heard my call. Oh, got it. Oh, uh, yeah, he did. That is pretty sick. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Oh, okay. What is this race? This is not what I expected at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do want to point out, so Anime is uh, currently deafened, whereas Sveti is listening to commentary. Oh, later, I so. forgot he's listening. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely, <laughs> definitely poisoned the decision making there, but I'm glad it turned out because yeah. that is one of the, that's one thing that you could definitely go for, and then it just starts going really, really bad. But oh yeah, so far it's good. I mean, it's especially because it's so close to like fake late clip, like you could sit there forever, mm -hmm. kind of like me with any other sort of clip, like snow or or IP. I have never seen you more distraught than when you're <laughs> trying to do snow clip in a darker side run there that's yeah. probably the most disappointed i've ever seen you with life yeah i was uh, <clears throat> the, yeah we don't want to talk about that it's been a while but yeah so i mean we're seeing that here right, oh <laughs> little bonk from speddy going in enemy leaving lake yeah but look at all these cutscenes he's got to watch Meanwhile, Speddy's just going to teleport right back to the Odyssey and be really, really close behind. Uh, yep, exactly. I mean, it just goes to show that, that you know, at this particular level, you know, going for those high-risk strats, I mean, go with what you know. If you can do it, do it. You know, because right now, we're, uh, enemy is just slightly ahead. Yeah, usually, usually like... You'll see a runner in a race like this go for late clip, and it's a really good example of being like, you know, you should really stick to the tried and true beginner strategies because look, enemy was able to pull ahead because he went for late clip, but Spetty just caught up doing late clip with a one ten oh five. Exactly, like... which is which is nuts, <laughs> which is absolutely nuts. <laughs> this is reminding me of the SMO Joy-Con race and like the like, one of the like sophomore freshman events where. SMO Joy-Con went for Spiritless, and Nurse Alice and Rose was like losing her mind for like 20 minutes. <laughs> That's fair. It's probably one of my favorite SMO tournament moments, honestly. That and the Dilly P pizza and the Hey There. Oh um, my gosh. 2 DSS <laughs> incident. God. Wait, was that yeah, a Dilly talking P with pizza these... or Ganon? I don't remember. Somebody was ordering pizza on Cocoms. I think, it, I think it was Dilly I think it was Dilly P. Yeah. That was a great yeah, talk, race. <laughs> <laughs> talking to these runners before this run, uh, you know, one of the areas that, that they kind of discussed a little bit specifically was wooded. Um, okay, enemy doing a spin throw, but not necessarily the uh, the ground pound there. Okay, but yeah. okay, we're going for tree route. All right, both players going for the tree mood. Are we going to see double nut clip with a 114.55 and a 110.05 on the board? I mean, it. It's possible. I think we're going to see it. <laughs> That's what we're looking at right now. <laughs> I mean... 
Yep. I don't know if you know this, but there's a an eight hour long video of the the pattern for nut click uh, nut clip on YouTube. I did not know that. Yeah. All right, enemy has got it. Speddy. Ah, uh, unfortunately no. not converting, but enemy okay. having some trouble out of bounds here. Take it another nope. bonk. Slightly high. <clears throat> But again, you'll be going for the backup route Definitely. here, but it takes another bonk, so... Bonk's galore right now, as both players having a little bit of issues with their respective routes, but definitely a bit of a divergence here. Enemy did the out-of-bounds section, though, which is arguably the scarier part. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, getting the actual nut clip itself is, is only half the battle. You know, getting that out-of-bounds movement is a little crazier. Uh, but, you know enemy moving the camera around to make sure that he could see kind of where he was going as best as he could uh was the right move yep. okay mario uh getting a little booty rash before dropping down to that nut and grabbing that moon and it's pretty having a lot of trouble climbing up the factory here enemy having some trouble with it as well looks like that triple jump will land correctly it's not a huge deal but would it not be quite as nice to speddy as lake was yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, and, and Wooded, I, honestly, it doesn't matter what category I ran. Wooded was one that I always dreaded. I don't know why. Um, it, it could be the, the the 1950s beach music set to a flower theme. I don't know. <laughs> but, but yeah, Wooded was definitely one of those places that once I was past it, I felt a lot better, a lot more confident. But it was one of those places that I dreaded coming up. All right, Spetty attempting to get caught up here. Oh my gosh, this, this has been kind of kind of bonk galore um, throughout Wooded. Oh, I'm just glad okay. we haven't seen a death yet. We've not seen a death. We've not seen Deep Woods. Enemy is going for Flower Road Skip without getting the Story Moon question mark. What? Yeah, yeah. Story Moonless. Enemy, why? <laughs> Is enemy about to do spiritless wooded kingdom? I mean, it's, I don't know. it's possible. It's possible. I mean, <laughs> so lost. <laughs> Commentator's curse incoming. <laughs> All right. So enemy into the tower. Spetty going ahead and getting the story moon here. Yeah, so I just want to touch on this real quick. A lot of people will, you know, in speedrunning, they'll be like, oh man, you need to not go for this strat because, okay, okay, all right, the spin pound FRS there. Oh, but the, no, the cat no. throw came out late. That Okay, yeah. if there's anybody who's allowed to blame a drop input on anything, it was that moment. There's no way, there's no way yeah. Speddy wasn't spamming that button. I don't believe it. I'm on Speddy's side. Yeah, yeah I don't blame him. Hit the P switch, take the road. Like, that, that oh no, worked. what? No! No, he ran off the end of the road. He got super overzealous. Oh, he was no. he, he was trying to rush it and he just kind of slipped off the edge. Oh my gosh, enemy has got a huge lead right now. Oh, and we're only 20 minutes into this run and I, I'm, I'm already <laughs> close to a heart attack. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. This is probably one of my favorite esmo races of all time um but what i was saying before is basically like you know players a lot of times will be like oh you can't go for this strat it's it's not gonna save you time you don't don't, don't go for this clip it, you don't need that until this time but like i don't know i've always been kind of the runner I, i've been in this kind of boat where it's just like if there's a cool trick in a run like i just kind of want to go for it you know like that's fair like there's some there's some games where you know I try to do the like, safe consistent strats like Mario 64, but like Ocarina of Time for example, it's just like my time is terrible, but I know all the tricks, you know, like I can, I can do all the coolest stuff in the game. Hey, you, it's you just, tried to teach me one time. It's just I like it didn't go over well. I, I don't know. Sometimes it's just cooler to learn the tricks than than go fast. It is, and and you know there's some like SM64 runners like Schnoz for example. He's one of those runners that that when he started out. He started out doing those more difficult strats. And I think that like, you know, there's there's advantages to both, right? So there's there's advantages to 
following the normal progression, learning beginner, learning intermediate, and, and working your way up, specifically for backup reasons, I think. But, you know, again, you take runners like Schnaz, for example, who is just, uh, you know, um, it decreases his time incredibly fast. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and so, again, I think that that there's advantages to both. Now, me, like, I, I mean, I, I've played SM64 for years now. Can I do LBLJ? No. <laughs> at all, not at all. All right, so enemy here in the Cloud Kingdom. No, my goodness, not going for any of those clouds early on. Made me a little bit nervous, but makes it on over. Will we see fast hats from you, though, these runners, is the question. Looks like enemy going to be going for it. Another really good Tomshi tutorial. Um, I'm probably one of the best ones out there, actually. Yeah, I have viewed it. I still can't do this strat very well, but I, I do know how to do this one. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff at SMO I cannot do whatsoever, but fast hats, definitely something to try to add to your arsenal at least, even if you just know how it works or how to do it. And that's the thing where, where my hat's off to these guys um, or, or anybody who runs Super Mario Odyssey because um, it's not as easy to practice as some of the, the older games, the more retro games. Um, oh, yeah. And, and it kind of reminds me of of practicing uh, fast hats specifically, like and having to just keep jumping off the side every time to try to reset Bowser. And, and, and so my hat's off to, to a lot of SMO runners or, or runners in general that are running, especially games like on the Switch. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the thing about like older games is that A, you've got tons of resources now, like practice runs and stuff like that. Uh, but even outside of that, you know, with like games that have Ooh. like cartridge based games, you, you often have like those like cheat engine things like Game Sharks or Game Genies where you can like modify right. the game easily. Or even just emulators, you know, where you can like have save states and stuff. Whereas uh, the emulators for the Switch aren't quite as robust and aren't going to feel quite the same when you, you know, move right. over to the console. Fun fact, before Saren decided to start running Super Mario Odyssey, um, uh, every time I would go into Cloud, uh, he would ask chat if, if that was the point that I was going to reset after I fall off the side. Um, just fun fact. <laughs> you gotta, you got to bully your friends a little bit out of their bad habits. That's fair. The, the thing is, you would always go for the, like craziest fastest way to get to bowser <laughs> over and over and then you just die like five times in a row and just get super angry <laughs> and then reset it down and you could just throw your cap out hit the thing long jump over and you'd be like minus a minute yeah it's fair but yeah i mean you know speedrunners, we we don't we don't really know what we're doing but right. yeah so you know right now enemy is has got a pretty commanding lead right now uh almost completely through lost missing a ground pound um to, to grab this moon but you know lost is another one of those that it's it's a very fast and concise kingdom but it's pretty straightforward right so you <laughs> oh my god that that was <laughs> that was a good call uh to kind of dive back take that you know a second or two and then <laughs> re-engage but yeah Lost is one of those where you can blink and it's done, but you know you can. It can cost you a little bit of time. Oh yeah, there's all this poison jam everywhere, and whenever you touch it for even a second, you are dead. If you get kleptoed, step in the wrong spot at the wrong time, you are losing a ton of time. Oh yeah. So definitely a scary kingdom, but when it all works out, it all works out. Exactly. Yeah, see, Kat calling me out in chat. Uh, she remembers me falling off ten times in a row. It's fair. It happened. But yeah, I mean, just as quick as we entered Lost, we're already leaving. I don't know what Nintendo's obsession is with, like, Jam and Pepto in this game. It's, it's, uh... I, I, don't, I don't really... Bad combination. Yeah, I don't necessarily understand, but... You know, it is what it is. All right. Enemy held the, or uh, almost out. that has got two more moons to grab here. Gonna go ahead, uh, grab this one, and then under the bridge, and then Spetty will be out as well as enemy goes into Night Metro. Night Metro, when I first started running this game to me, 
was super confusing because I, I kind of have a rule when, whenever I speed run a game I like to play that game casually first Sveti avoiding the death there kind of hot yeah he did but um you know so I remember Night Metro like <laughs> taking for absolute ever um and so seeing getting around that is is always astonished me in this game you know, this this is one thing I remember a lot about Night Metro when it first came out was awning jump for people was like the hardest thing ever. Like you'd see people just get super mad at awning jump and just lose oh, yeah. the awning jump. And it seems so funny looking back at it now because like it, it's not an easy jump, but like when you know why, you know, you're losing height and like that sort of thing, it's like it becomes much, much easier. Exactly. Um, and... I mean, understanding Mario's movement in this game, and, and that's why I like Mario games in particular, because they they incorporate different movement types and, you know, stalling a jump. This is kind of a, a perfect example of that, is this awning jump here, is is being able to stall just slightly to make sure that you have the height to, to reach it. Where when this game was first ran, I mean, you know, people knew it could happen, but they didn't sit down and analyze it like they do now. Oh my God! Oh no. Hey, missing the cap jump or, or missing the bounce off of the cap gonna be starting all the way back here. That's heartbreaking. That's absolutely heartbreaking. All right. Enemy climbing in City Hall right now. Sveti, taking the easy route, I, I don't. I don't really blame him. Like, you know, at this point, you, you've got to, to manage whatever that risk has. So, like, if you're going to end up taking a slight loss to make sure that something gets done, then great. Um, at this point, Spetty needs to, to kind of put his head down and and just play the game. Uh, not worry about enemy or, or where enemy is. Enemy is just about to leave the top. Oh, my gosh. So, enemy not doing the long jump across. We talk about being safe. This, this is the epitome of safety right here. Uh, that is going to allow Spetty to catch up slightly as we go up to fight Wiggler. Now, what's funny is, again, when this game first came out, people were putting on their streams, like, how many two cycles or three cycles they get in one night. And and now, like, it's not even really a thing anymore. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> it is, but it's, but it's not as much as it used to be. Like, it, it was a big deal. Like, when you add a counter to your stream overlay, like... But now it's 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 not. Yeah, if you get a three cycle, it's a big mistake now. Exactly. As the enemy is doing the YOLO uh, strat here for baiting the Wiggler. Oh. Speddy. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So Wiggler is going to be in it. So he he missed the shots in the beginning. Um, it's going to be kind of weird to manipulate uh, Wiggler from this point, but it could still be done. It just makes it a little more difficult. Anime, uh taking some damage. Oh. Come on, come on, come oh. on, come oh, on. No. Oh, no, no, no. Panicking. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my How? God. Right at the last <laughs> second. Right at the last second. I thought it was going to be a three cycle. Oh, my God. That was remarkable. That was... Yeah. I mean... Really, for this, you can't rely on just motion or or, or just uh, using the sticks. You kind of have to use a combination of both. But those hitboxes are so wonky because they're slightly on top of each other. So we saw there where enemy looked like he hit it dead on, but it, nothing happened. Uh, and I think that was the case there. But yeah, enemy finishing up now, grabbing that moon. Spetty gonna gonna have to do something here in Day Metro to make up a little bit of time. One hundred percent. All right, going into Day Metro. I liked Day Metro. Like, uh, there, there's a, a clip. I think either you or Cat clipped it where I I accidentally got Scooter Clip. What? How do you do that accidentally? Yeah. There's no way to do. It. You well, have to be on you, the scooter. If, well, yeah. I mean, he, I was on the scooter. I was trying, but it was a complete accident because somebody told me, "Hey, hold your controller upside down," and so I did. And then I got it first try, and it was in my PB. <laughs> yeah. 
So that's why you went for scooter clip for like months and yes. never got it ever. Yes. <laughs> yeah. well, I think it was Timpani that told me to hold my controller up, uh, upside down. I think that was... Uh, um, she ended up deciding to say, hey, uh, stop doing this like a crazy person. Stop driving the car. And she was like, hey, just hold your controller upside down. And it worked. Okay. Okay. And then I never okay. got it to work again. with the slow lineup. 100% success rate. Easy clap. I just realized All we right. probably should have uh, gone to the stat sheet and moved that around. I always forget we have the stat sheets. They're super useful, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. I just it up. Nice. All right. Well, um... Oh, man. Somebody already did it. Okay. Base stats Spend. people, whoever that is. Betty kind of hopping a little bit. I don't know, Saren, you've, you've played through this game casually, right? I mean, I know you, you've ran the game. What? <laughs> yes. you, you've played through casually. Not 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 100%, but yeah. So what would you, you say casually is, is would be your favorite kingdom versus, like, actually running the game? Oh, man, I don't know. Uh... Well, I like metro a lot more than i initially thought i was going to when i first saw metro like in the trailers and stuff i thought it was like the worst thing ever yeah. and it reminded me of like sonic adventure which is... and it wasn't just in the trailer why is anime going for bullet building i just realized i'm sorry yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is happening what enemy's going for bullet building yeah why not <laughs> and enemy enemy is showing that he's a force to be reckoned with like i don't he's going over to the top no, oh, no. Not. Okay. does he go ahead and do All the right. vault backup no he's going for the over the top strat again. All right, this is new territory I've never seen okay. before. Uh, yeah. Uh, Fat man, I, I found mean, these individuals on the Super Mario Odyssey any percent open sign up sheet. Unless you're talking about the the commentators, we were found in a gutter somewhere and brought out to commentate Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah, I mean you're not wrong. They gave us a couple of Taco Bell bean burritos and we were good to go. It was all, all the payment we needed. Oh man, chili cheese burritos. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> Enemy going up to the top of the building here. I always like to move it up here because it, it it was so smooth. You know, watching some of the higher level runners <laughs> as the commentators curse just as the enemy falls. But yeah, I always thought that was really cool to jump back. Oh, we got a spin throw in there. So, how do you actually catch an up a little bit here? Enemy losing some time in the bullet building route, and uh, I don't know, just overall, I feel like Spetty making a few better decisions. Climbing yeah, I mean, you're not wrong here. Enemy still is ahead by one moon at this point. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know if I'd agree with the bullet building uh, reroute there, but. Definitely bullseye swag. incoming it, it was pretty swag speaking of swag when's when's the next ccg swag invitational you know that's I, what put ccg on the map i get that question all the time actually you the should. first the first thing we ever streamed i think was a gsr race in ocarina of time interesting I'm, I'm pretty sure i actually i actually forget about that all the time but i was looking through some vods today to find a vod for somebody and then i was like oh i forgot that happened <laughs> all right so i mean right now we're we're almost neck and neck again you know what i mean like we're <laughs> we're almost tied up again uh, it goes to show i mean the the choices that you make really affect um the run here in in, in races specifically i i mean of course i've raced you probably more than any other human being in the world but I don't know. Through, throughout my races with you and, and, and watching you, um, the decisions that I've made <laughs> definitely affected the outcome of the run. All right, enemy leaving Day Metro. It's Betty right behind him. Yeah, this race is ridiculously close still. This is like yeah. nobody could have possibly looked at this like race on the roster and been like, yeah, this is going to be a close one. But yeah. here we are. 
halfway through the run, more than halfway through the run, and there's like, what, 10 seconds or less between them? Actually, I can check exactly. the stat sheet. That is a thing that exists. Where have they moved the difference? Yeah, yeah it looks like a that 16, administrative assistant. 16 second difference in between the two of them. Yeah, that's that's insane. If you guys haven't checked it out yet, I know I plugged it earlier, but do check out the stat sheet. We have a incredibly dedicated team of gamers uh, headed up by Matsy, our fantastic stats man. Um, you can track pretty much every stat on these sheets. You can check strat consistency, trick consistency, you know, split times, who has the best golds in the tournament, what percentage of runs were, you know, finished in which amount of time. It's absolutely insane just how much information is crammed into these sheets. Yeah, I, I mean, and it, it, it's almost, it, it brings that extra, you know, oomph to the, uh, to the race itself, like knowing exactly, okay, well, you know, this person has these time saves coming up. But I mean, just like I said, we, we talked about at the beginning of the match, there's, there's a four minute and 50 second difference between these runners right now. But, you know, right now we're 16 seconds apart. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, I think part of it is enemy is just not, not a one player runner. Like, enemies played right. two player. Enemies played, you know, uh, uh, what's what's the category called? Cap, uh, min cap. Min cap. Yeah, yeah. that's the one. <clears throat> um, but yeah, not a huge one player fan. So, at least running himself. Um, and it looks like Speddy is gonna opt to go for Snowdram. So this is gonna be interesting. Had yeah, so Dram making it up to the the chest though. That was a little bit manka. Yeah, and Snow is one of those kingdoms that can really cost you a lot of time, especially if you're electing to do things like Snow Dream. Like if if you happen to make that mistake, and you know you don't delay that dive just enough to be able to get that distance, then you lose a lot of time. Then we're right back in the same situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no good backup. You basically just do Snow Dream until you get it. Exactly. All right. <clears throat> you know, we're kind of coming down to where... Oh, 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 that was terrifying. Enemy accidentally diving away from the moon. Um, rip enemy sticks, because I know enemy just shoved his stick back the other direction as hard as he possibly could. One thing that we really haven't touched on at all in this race is the fact that um, both these players didn't have a ton of availability this week and none of it really lined up with each other. So this race happening at all right now is kind of a miracle. And I don't believe either player, you know, is like in their right element, right? Where they're like, oh, I've had plenty of time to practice. You know, t today was a free day. It was my day off. Like both racers right. probably had busy days, you know, coming home and then they jump straight into a race, no practice or like a tiny bit of practice. Like a little warm up or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that's probably contributing a little bit to the, the scuffness. And of course, uh, the just decision making and like what strats we're going for is definitely up in the ante in terms of, uh, I don't know, in my opinion, the fun factor. I don't know if you saw that. I was convinced that enemy was just going to jump square off the side right there. It was so close. It was so very close. Oh, okay. Betty uh, wanted to show off a little swag before grabbing this moon here. So right now, uh, it, it looks like Spetty is slightly ahead now. Note that different moons were obtained, so there is slightly different routing that, that we'll see kind of come to a head here at the end. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Betty, having to go into the shop here where Rango Room is the next spot for Anime. going to grab that moon around the corner and Speddy of course still having to do Snowdram as well so I think if we see Speddy succeed oh, here okay. on Snowdram we should be slightly ahead or all tied up but I think I'd right. give the edge to Speddy at this moment in time but relies so on that well. success yeah I, I definitely agree with that um, okay lining it up the nerves are there Nice. Okay. So, yeah, you know, and I think you're right. It's going to be pretty neck and neck at this point. Um, looks like enemy oh, just <laughs> slightly ahead. 
Um, and I'm talking a <laughs> second or so. That's yeah. All right, so let's take a look real quick. Out of Cap Kingdom, nine second difference. Out of Cascade, can't really tell from the stat sheet. Out of Sand, eight seconds difference. Out of Lake, four seconds mm -hmm. difference. What did we had a bit of difference? Oh, we won't count that one. Lost also mm -hmm. about a minute difference. But what's this? One, two, three, four, five, six kingdoms now underneath a twenty second difference in this race, and it's been back and forth. <laughs> it's not been you know one person ahead, one person behind. Like <laughs> now it is. 0.49 milliseconds. So about a half a second. Yeah, that, that's that's pretty crazy. 0.49, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, yeah 0.49 is what the difference is right now. Um, that's that's absolutely insane. So about a half a second difference. Um, enemy having a little bit of trouble getting up top. Oh, no, oh, Spitty. No, Spitty. Okay, I think we're okay now. Not quite getting um, the, the height there. <clears throat> enemy taking a really wide berth where Speddy was able to just close the gap just by taking a more uh, accurate route. Enemy also missing the moon. Speddy taking the lead for the first time in a little while here. Yeah, how long will that last though? Come on. this It's going to be back and forth at least seven more times till the end of the run. You're not wrong. <laughs> at least. The two point oh, five no. section here. Oh gosh! And Sveti, just Again. like that, has lost the lead. Enemy <laughs> pulling ahead. Oh, but a bug from enemy. Oh, enemy oh the double backflip from Sveti. Let's go. Okay, that was sick. All right. Yeah, Seaside, uh, uh, another one of those slightly quicker kingdoms. Um, I still remember when Fish Clip was found. That was probably one of the most pog things all right oh my gosh uh, okay oh no no fish dip from no. steady unfortunate tried to go for it tried to go for a fast setup too but not not managing to grab it unfortunately enemy slightly uh, in the lead right now <laughs> fish bonks i don't know why fish bonks trigger me like sm64 bonks for some reason i don't know going. if it's because they they bounce off the wall like a gelatinous cube or what? But yeah, <laughs> just I, like, think, I think the animation is probably the most frustrating thing. Like, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, and we are synced. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think at this point, the question isn't so much oh my what God. strats will Speddy go for. It's more what strats won't Speddy go for. And I think the only thing on my radar really is... Uh, Spiritless. I mean, even stuff like 2 DSS wouldn't be too surprised to see Spetty go for. Oh, for sure. And right now, I mean, we we can clearly see the difference in movement between Spetty and Enemy here. Um, just grabbing that moon that that was a hundred percent movement based. All right. Oh, oh nervous, nervous. I'm telling you, it's it approaching that wall is just like. Yeah anxiety yep yeah i always go like straight parallel to it so that i can't possibly yep. go out of bounds because i'm just too scared because it's just such a pain to deal with yep but seaside wrapping it up speddy taking a slight lead here uh going into luncheon now luncheon is on that same plane of existence as wooded for me because it's it's a place where yeah, you can gain a lot of time, but you can also lose a lot of time. It's kind of a... Yeah. Well, yes, go inbounds, Cat, but out of bounds for me because I'm already out of bounds. So then I don't want to go out of bounds again because then I'll be inbounds, like a double negative. All right. Coming into luncheon now. So much tech has been discovered in the last couple of years in luncheon, you know, when the, the game first started. It was always speculated that you could skip uh, skip spewer. It was always uh, speculative that you could um, skip certain story moons. But you know, up until about a year and a half ago, uh, maybe even two years, it that wasn't really a thing. You know, the 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 big thing was setting up um, salt pile jump, making sure to get enough height up there, and uh, it just wasn't a thing in the beginning. It, it was thought of, but yeah. Chat 
calling out Spetty uh, to go for Spearless here. We'll see. I don't, you know, I don't know. Because there have been instances where those higher level strats have paid off for both of these runners tonight, but I don't know if. I don't know if he's really in it. Yeah. <laughs> in a position to, to attempt that. So, yeah, going for Nut Clip, going for Lake Clip. These are all, you know, pretty crazy impressive stuff. Going for Spiritless is actually like bananas bonkers. Like if you're doing oh, yeah. Spiritless at 110, you're actually like completely out of your mind. So oh, I'm glad sure. to not be seeing that right now. That would just be throwing the race, quite honestly. There's so many difficult portions of Spiritless. Like it's not just like, oh, yeah. oh I know this one trick. It's like you got to know a series of movements and tricks and it's a whole ordeal. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh man, yeah, Amen. Going for Spiritless early. I can't believe that the first race of the tournament in the B division we saw Spiritless and it was like flawless. Like it was like you could have seen that in the any percent league for sure. That was crazy. Yeah, I mean, especially I mean, even in the the B division, you don't really expect to see that. You know, you expect to see very similar to what these runners are doing now, which is like that tried and true luncheon movement. Um, oh. Enemy taking a slight burn there. Uh, what was interesting when when Tippy started running uh, Super Mario 64, she asked if taking damage and then grabbing a star, you'd lose time because that is something where you do lose time in SMO. And I, I had to explain, no, it's it's different. Yeah, you you're getting health back, but it's not like SMO where it, it creates a whole separate animation to get health back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the animation filling up your, your health bar happens in a cutscene where you already can't move, so it doesn't change anything. Whereas in this game, it literally freezes your game for like, how long is it's it? It's a couple of seconds. It's a couple of seconds. Yeah. Depending on how much health was lost. It's a ridiculous amount of time for sure. As enemy is going for slots. Slots. Interesting. Uh, that is a moon in luncheon. That's interesting. Okay. All right, so I mean, let's let's see where it goes from here. I mean, I feel like we should have like a bingo card for this match. Like we should have prepared oh, yeah. a bingo card. <laughs> like, 100%. enemy goes for luncheon slots. Uh, that's not one I would have expected to see, but if you got that in your card, then you know, congratulations. Yeah. Oh, okay. So here, you know the the portable manipulation with the the camera as well making sure because if, if you leave your camera up the potobo will typically be on the on this side of, of this particular island fork room which was and it's still kind of the the tried and true like super movement intensive section of the run um you know because you have a lot of inputs at once like okay I'm not really sure why the door didn't open there for enemy. That was weird. I think he just rolled into it, didn't he? Uh, quite oh, okay. We're get, we're, just do what everybody else does. Just playing dropped inputs. Oh, yeah. That was definitely a dropped input there. Yeah. How do people do that jump? I need to figure that out. I'm going to force dance to end their call with me and have them teach me how to do that stupid lava bowl jump because I just can't do it. Oh, my God, Spetty. What is happening? It's <laughs> an enemy. <laughs> enemy. Flinging down, I could I could show you that jump too, but I'd have to look up my uh, my switch. We would need like multiple uh, bingo cards, quite honestly. And oh yeah, I'm not even sure what'd be on them. But you are, you are you are free to commit to the meme if you would like to. Okay, Spetty, making some like. Oh, really let's go, enemy. That was that was a powerful and, strat there. Sorry, to, sorry to yeah, interrupt you, but that's because Saren still uses that strat instead of. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't use that one. It's free. Come we'll on. talk. We'll talk. All right. Oh no, enemy grabbing the grabbing the turnip. <laughs> what like, is going on? Why does yeah. why is he having? So the he's turnip? he's going back. So you know. Oh my god, did he pop it up with his hat? Oh no, it's yeah, over. So, yeah, it is over. So attempted to go back, put the turn up to get the a moon turn up. I mean a turn up moon, a moon turn up. Yeah. Interesting choice. Very interesting choice. 
I'm not sure what's happening anymore. I know I've said I'm that not... many times, but I'm really, really not sure what's going on anymore. I'm not either. <laughs> yeah, because... <laughs> Maybe he'll just go for the story move. Okay. He didn't get a cat bounce there, which is why he, he bounced back into the Pepto. All right. Enemy changing strats. Good call. Uh, just going for the story moon there. Shake that controller like you mean it. Oh, my God. Oh, don't die. No, he's going to die. He's going to die. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> oh, my God. That was so close. Oh. All right. Luncheon has really opened a lead up for Speddy, though. I'm not sure what is going oh, on on enemy screen. We're, like, doing oh, reverse wow. luncheon with slots and turnips. Yeah. Uh, kind of interesting there. You know, so he would have gotten two mo moons there once. I didn't realize he didn't get the first turnip moon. Interesting. Okay. All right, Speddy. I'm going to go ahead and leave lunch and headed to Bowser's. Okay, we're going to get shop moon to replace the other moon in town. I'm... Uh, anime no. runs at least uh, a couple of other categories. I don't know about Spuddy. All uh, right. Okay. Let's. What is going? Okay. I think now at this point, enemy may be just trying to to back up just to get enough moons to be able to get the story moon and get the heck out of here. Yeah, because he's going to grab the story moon and, uh, or the two story moons and then get the heck out. That's fair. Okay. Meatless? So, yeah, I think, I think, what? Did you say yeetless? Meatless. Oh. Oh, I think he's trying to show off. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Why aren't we going for the torch moon? I mean, please explain. Well, because he only needs three moons, so all he needs to do is get. Um... Yeah, but why would you skip the torch moon? That moon is literally free. Because he already got oh. it. Oh my god! A death right here. He's gonna start back over at the checkpoint. Wait, what do you mean he already got it? He did he really? So no, he no, he already he got the slots moon, so he's already one moon ahead. Yeah, but why would you not get this moon right here that's like completely free and takes like two seconds? Because you don't need it because the last moon is three moons. Yeah, but, but okay, yeah, but I understand that he no longer needs it, but why would oh, you go this, this way in the first place is my question. And no, sir, I cannot answer that question. That's interesting. Okay. All right. So he's going to grab the multi moon and get the heck out of lunch and. So it's about a three minute and 30 seconds. I'm guessing three minute and 30 seconds. Is what I'm guessing right now. Oh, enemy only knows skewer list, okay. All right. So leaving out of luncheon. Oh my gosh. I mean we, we only have to me, we I mean we, we only have really <laughs> Bowser's and Moon. That's pretty much it at this point. Ruins, yeah, I mean ruins there, but you know There's not really a whole lot of ability to be able to make time saves. Now, this is kind of where the rubber meets the road. Like, if you're that type of runner that just resets quite a bit, um, then, yeah, you're going to have a tougher time towards the end of the run versus a runner who, you no know, resets a whole lot and, and, you know, continues to focus on the, the latter part of the run. All right, let's see. Yeah, so, so right now, entering two minutes into, and Yeah, entering into Ruined here just as Speddy is leaving. So Ruined is a pretty pretty long kingdom. I mean, there's not a lot going on here, but considering what it is, it takes a bit of time. Speddy with a pretty massive lead here. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you're you're really going to be looking for a mistake in in, um, in Mech. 
Mech is kind of the one of the oh my gosh, what is going on, enemy? Um, Mech is, is one of those areas where you can lose a very significant amount of time. Um, and I think that's kind of what enemy needs to hope for here. Um, I mean, and that's the thing about speedrun races, like not just the difference in strats, but I mean, even these small mistakes, so Speddy taking a bonk right here, um, rather than getting up top, though, those are the, the things that enemy is going to be looking for. And enemy needs to stick to that driving truth, right? Um, you talked about the, the different categories that anime has run before. Um, that's where we're going to see if, if that experience is going to pay off here. All right. Anime, wrapping it up here, going to be going through a couple of different cutscenes. Now, when we get to mech, depending on what strats are used... Uh, on either side again that's where we're going to see that big time change with bowser here you're you're kind of just running through and, and getting the few moons that you need to be able to trigger to to get the heck out of there so all of those story moons going through those bowser takes a considerable amount of time for not a whole lot of moons yeah for sure and at this point speddy is going to have to make some sort of mistake like we have uh you know, like a mech meltdown or something like that, which, considering all it's the things possible. that's happened in this race, um, you know, mech meltdowns don't happen nearly as much as they used to, but I'm, I'm interested to see what strats are even going to come out in mech. Like, will we see birdless mech at all? And, you know, at this point, if I'm Speddy and I want to win this race, I'm, I'm using that bird all day, every day. You know, because I, I want to make sure that I don't fall off. All right. <clears throat> oh, Spetty diving in to Mr. Birdie Man. Enemy going to be leaving ruins now. We'll have a more accurate time distance uh, whenever enemy leaves here. And, you know, as we're seeing in the chat, uh, honestly, every single division that's, that's in this tournament is fantastic for its own right. I mean, Division D is, is because of things like this. Like, you know... You don't know what's going to happen. Just like that, Speddy diving off. Is that not the second value dive in the night from Speddy? Oh, my God. Yeah, that, that was nuts. Okay. So, <laughs> Speddy grabbing that moon enemy coming into Bowser right now. All right. I, I'm really interested in seeing what mech is going to look like and, and what, um, you know, what strats are going to individually be employed. I mean, we got a topper first from Speddy right now. Enemy trying to catch up. Oh, oh Speddy taking a little bit of damage here. Uh, typically, this cycle is not too, too crazy. The last one, you get to jump a little bit early. Okay, and he missed fine. it. Oh, yeah. I was looking at the ogre. Honestly, I was more scared of enemy missing the ogre, but yeah, topper fight not yeah. going too well for Speddy. Yeah, and, and these, again, these are those those time losses that enemy's really counting on. So if enemy can kind of just, you know, put his head down, do what he knows, you know, uh, he may be able to catch up towards the end of Bowser's. Okay. Now, heading over to Harriet. Is that still a thing, Saren? Is, is there still a, a, a topper first versus Harriet first? Like, uh, It'll never die. There's no okay. way. It'll be and around I figured, forever. I figured after a few years, I thought it would just go away. No, nope, it it's here forever. We're okay. stuck with it. That's fair. I think, I think I finally murdered the... DSTA explanation trope, but I think that top of first versus Harriet first. I don't think I don't think anybody could possibly kill that one. It's just baked into the community. Yeah, I mean you're not wrong. <laughs> All right, enemy trying to catch up here. Speddy finishing up. Harriet gonna be heading up to what we talked about before. Uh, that infamous mech fight. Right now, I mean, and, and you look at it. Spetty just grabbed the fourth moon, enemy grabbed the second moon, so it's only two moons apart, but it, it, it's at this point, uh, the gap is pretty big. 
Uh, right now, leaving Ruin, so everybody knows, that was a 2 minute and 42 second advantage in Spetty's favor at that point. All right. Yeah, I've always been Harry at first, because I, I read left to right. I don't know. I'm, I'm weird like that. But he grabbing the crate here, a little bit of an or orthodox strategy, but it does nab it. Yeah, and this camera always messed me up when I started learning uh, getting that crate there. It I don't know why, it just because it's slightly different from it if you jump. It's, it's less of a head-on camera. Uh, and I remember, uh, you know, the first category, of course, I've learned was, was this one, was the neat person, then I'd go to darker side. And in darker oh. side, you need to keep your bird. And the countless amount of times that I've just jumped here and just dropped the bird and had to start <laughs> all over was super triggering. What do you keep the bird for? Uh, there's a um, uh, a thing you have to peck behind before you go up to Mac. Oh, gotcha. I can't remember. It's a it's either a rock or it's something like that. I think it's a rock. Okay, birdless mech from Spetty. All right, that answered my question. But oh, unable oh. to actually make it all the way up to the top. Gonna opt to grab the bird. Just go for the tried and true bird full strap. Yeah. I don't blame him. I mean, you know, at this point, he needs to maintain that lead so that that's minimizing, you know, as many mistakes as possible. Bird full. Yeah, that's right. All right. Oh man, how do we get that much height? That was crazy. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a little insane. See, and Spetty taking his time. If you notice that, like, you know, not trying to push it. You know, taking his time, making sure. Okay, all right, I'm lining it up. I'm good. And then mech mechanics. I, how many times I've been just go through the middle of mech, right there because standing too close to the edge. Oh, okay. Oh, that was scary. That that was kind of scary, but okay. We got it. Yeah, I think Spuddy's done it. Oh, oh my god. That <laughs> was... <laughs> that was terrifying. That was almost my fault. That was... Yeah. I feel like we need a <laughs> double or nothing race. I think the enemy is definitely going to be tuckered out after this one. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Oh. Okay. All right. So now at this point, you know, Andy both of them are going be... for crates this way. What the heck is this? How is this a thing? Is this a thing people do? I don't understand. Instead of going over the top, they go over the side. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen that until this. Maybe I just watch too much uh, tournament play. Maybe I don't know the true strats. Probably. All right, enemy going up top. Betty leaving Bowser is going to be heading into Moon. Side is faster? Am I, like, drunk? Is it just the way they're doing it? Maybe. Maybe this is one of those, I mean, like, Berenstein it, get, Bears, Berenstein Bears yeah, like, scenarios where... Oh, my... Oh, oh my God, Andy! What? Oh! Oh my God! Can we get some that scientists was... to analyze that footage? How did how did that work? I don't understand. Yeah, that was that was. I, I think if he was like one pixel lower, it wouldn't work. Birdless coming from enemy as well. Okay, yeah, the triple jump is is the reason why I'm confused. I don't know why. Uh, enemy, not making it up with that one. Nope. And getting poked by the bird. Gonna okay. go for it again, it looks like. Now the mech has turned a little bit awkwardly. Let's see if that affects anything. Oh, looks like nope. The bird might just be the strategy for enemy here. Yeah, I'm thinking so as well. Alright, going into Moon Kingdom, that's actually... Uh, oh, oh, okay. Can you take... I know you can take damage if the mech falls on you. Can you take <laughs> damage from the mech's legs? What do you mean? Like so, stepping right, on you? No, no, no. Like whenever it falls over like to one of the sides. If if the mech itself 
falls on you. I know you take damage, but enemy was literally right under the legs. I feel like, yeah. I don't know. I would assume so, yeah. But I'm not sure. Any part of the mech, yeah. So enemy was like super close to taking damage there. Oh, okay. Speddy, uh, not able to get on top of the Sphinx. Moon Cave Skip for Speddy, gonna be very clean, making it easily. Oh. Not too said crazy very... on the jump dives. Hey, you said very clean, and I thought he was gonna jump right past his cap there. No. It's impossible. Impossible. Alrighty. Speddy gonna be knocking on that door. Enemy finishing up here. I mean, th this race was crazy all the way until luncheon. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I'm looking at it. Um, Speddy was in the lead out of cap. Enemy in the lead out of sand, lake, wooded, lost. Night Metro, day Metro, and snow. Uh, seaside, Speddy took a seven second advantage. And then luncheon just ran away with it, and it was only by mistakes. You know, it wasn't necessarily by. Um, I mean, I think if I think if enemy just knew the actual luncheon route and just did that, I think it would be extremely close right now. But oh yeah, yeah for sure. Not the case. All right. So enemy headed up to moon. For the longest time, Serum would make fun of me because uh, I used to call <laughs> I the fire hit scan. I still make fun of you for that all the time. Oh, that's good. Hit because, scan. Okay, because somebody told you it was a ground scanner, but then you were like, well, it's a hit scan. I'm an Overwatch yeah. player. I'm going to call it a hit scan. <laughs> it's like, like Zenyatta. Oh, Spetty. Messing up the cycle there. Not able to grab the hat. Bowser just Zenyatta nabbed it right scan. up. <laughs> The not his skin, though. Uh, McCree. Uh, there you Cassidy. go. Cassidy. Soldier. Is that better? There you go. Yeah, make sure to stay tuned after this. We do have the uh, Cool Cat Overwatch League coming up right after this. So, Poggers. Kappa. I'm not in it. Wait, what? Non Kappa. You're, you're my star player on my team. What the heck yeah. do you mean? I, I've resigned. Oh, man. Resigns. Chat demanding <laughs> two DSS from Spetty. Looking for the throw potential. Maybe some points on the line for enemy. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to happen. I doubt it. I honestly really hope it doesn't, but... I mean, you never know. With I mean, the nature got, of how these SMO races go, I'm kind of expecting the worst. Following that absolute script to keep the viewers here as long as possible. Yeah, it's for the content. We saw some uh, some players or some gamers in the chat complaining about the ads. Yes, you know, yes, it yes. Is about the content. Yes, ready. Yes, I love it. Oh my god, I hate it. Enemy, enemy having trouble getting I, up. I on don't think this Betty knows where to jump. Uh. Yoink! I, I think we're too far right. I'm not sure. I've never done this trick. <laughs> I haven't either. My <laughs> guesses were too far to. Uh, excuse me. I think we were too far to the left. And maybe to the not, left. Not tall enough. Yeah. Did you say not tall enough instead of not high enough? Shut up. It's like <laughs> six in the morning for me. Okay. <laughs> fine. It's fine. So Speddy going for two DSS and then opting to skip two DSS or two DS. So um, that's a thing. Yeah, it is. But well, we are heading up to the cat jam section here, where if you don't put a cat jam in the chat room, you are banned for the next four hours, or at least the rest of the race. So make sure to get some jams in the chat room. Very important. Can it be any jam, or I mean, it has as to long be... as it's not a pep ad. If it's a pep ad, then that's like the reverse of putting in a cat jam. Oh. Definitely banger music, though. Oh, yeah. 
should make this emote into a jam. Oh, that'd be great. Shut up there. That emote is so gross. Game nerd, you're walking a very fine line there, buddy. That is a lot of Pepe D's I'm seeing in the chat room. I got your bad game nerd. It's fine. Betty finishing it up here. No one does so, to save enemy, Sage. But I mean, that that's okay. Finishing things off with a 113.03. Spetty moving on to the next round. Very beautiful. Yes. That, that is pretty fun. That that was a great race. Oh, whoa, I'm just that, typing it like hacker t text in the chat. Till the ex <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's fair. But, yeah, uh, I, I think it was a fantastic race. Um, oh, yeah, 100%. You know, definitely not what I expected to... You know, just just kind of looking at the stats, looking at the the PB, definitely not what I expected. Uh, Saren speaking in his cat alien language. That's what it is. But yeah, I'm sure we'll get these guys in here uh, once everything is said, tried, and true. What a race. But I didn't have game audio that whole time. <laughs> so wait. Wait, why? Just, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to have to ask that question as to, like, we're... So that was 100% visual. No no audio, nothing. I mean, we have Spetty at the booth. He can speak if he wants. I don't know if he's here. Maybe no I audio whatsoever on the PC. I don't know. Oh, my God. Enemy's dead. Uh, what? Oh yeah, okay. I... Yeah, so let's say it was really distracting to have the game audio and you guys talking at the same time. Uh... So, <laughs> so instead yeah. of muting us, you muted the game audio. I'm confused. Yeah, because I wanted to hear the commentary. Oh, oh gosh. my gosh, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's a new one. <laughs> I mean, Saren Thero comms are a rarity these days. Just. You know, throwing that out there. They're really not. Well, I gotta say, that's definitely a powerful move. Uh, as we see, enemy make a pretty powerful move into this pipe here. Going for regular 2DS. Let's see what happens. Beautiful. Not going for 2DSS, though. Yeah, kind of sad. Yeah, we... <laughs> We were holding out, you know, we definitely have some questions for you about that run in particular, because <laughs> especially if you're listening to the commentary, like, tell me this right now. You you weren't going into Lake planning on doing Lake Clip, were you? Uh, Kind of. I was, like, thinking about it the entire time, because I've been doing a lot of Lake ILs with Lake Clip. So, so then, you, then you heard us say, yeah, there's no way we're going to see a late clip in, the, in, the, in Division D right now in this race. And then, and then all of a sudden, do yeah, and, and, and that, <laughs> that's pretty much sealed the deal then. Okay. That, yeah, that makes sense. Commentators yeah, affecting the outcomes of races. I see. Yeah, and then Snowdram was kind of, like, just scary. <laughs> that was terrifying. My heart was beating at, like, I don't even know. It was <laughs> scary. Well, it probably didn't help that we we sat here talking about the entire time that yeah, this is the uh, the the time loss that's needed. Yeah. <laughs> if you were listening. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, a lot I, of, all the hits here. We are we are down to just down the base to the, health. The regular three. That's okay. He's alive. I just realized yeah, the I mean, enemy's I... webcam has been off this whole time. <laughs> Enemy's been here yes. the whole time. Yes. <laughs> Enemy. <laughs> we, got, we got him just in time. <laughs> we did. Yeah, we did. Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> that's so sorry. <laughs> that's, that's 100% on Saren, too. This race has been such a phenomenal experience. That's all I'm going to say.
Yeah. Yeah, it has been. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the back and forth the whole hey. time. How are you feeling? <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm feeling pretty good. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. Nice. Uh, I knew luncheon was going to be iffy. I didn't realize I was going to mess it up that bad. <laughs> like, were, were you listening or were you watching? Uh, I, um, I would pop in like after I started when I started dumping my moons into the Odyssey. Okay. I would like pop in, just kind of give a look and be like, oh, cool. What's chat up to? Gotcha. OK, yeah, because I mean, we were like, hold on, wait. So, so he's going for the other turnip moon. What's what's going on here? Like, I, is, this, is this something new? I couldn't remember. I'm gonna be honest. I'm like, you know what? I don't remember. I'm gonna go grab that shot moon really quick. I'm pretty sure people use that moon sometimes. <laughs> yeah, because because I don't know if you know this, but like you guys at one point were less than a half a second apart, all uh, the way up into luncheon. All the way, yeah, luncheon that... sealed the deal. Yeah, that actually sounds about right. Ooh, did you really? Nice job. Yeah, by like 20 seconds. Oh my god. Was really bad. Fun story. <laughs> I uh, I golded the mecha fight, but or by mecha fight I mean all of Bowser's kingdom. But like also, it was kind of garbage anyways, and it was garbage the previous run that are on these splits too. So uh, the wooded gold, however, that was pretty cool. That, that was, was pretty good. neat. Because uh, you got nut clip. Spend it in, get nut clip, and then you know the movement there. I, you know, we were kind of worried a little bit, uh, but you were you were pushing the camera over as hard as you could, and I was like, man, I, I bet you <laughs> he's breaking his stick to get the camera over right now. I'm just like, God, I hope I remember this correctly. <laughs> yeah, that out of bounds movement, yeah. I mean, and that was really good because I mean, we we went through. There wasn't more than I think once seaside. You were at like a seven second. Uh, you were off by seven seconds from each other, <sighs> um, you know, and and at that point, I mean, I, I didn't get to see the final numbers there. Um, actually, I could see the PB numbers. I didn't get to see the final numbers of, of this particular race. But yeah, that honestly was close the entire time. I got to be honest. I looked over uh, as I was leaving snow and I was like, there's no way I'm leaving first. Hold on. Right, and that's where like it it you could tell it, it really didn't fall apart until till luncheon at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think if you would have had that that regular because you said you know spewerless, right? That's, that's what I you do I I know spewerless in two player. I mostly uh, play this game in two player. I gotcha, rarely yeah. played in one player except for like my bingo tournaments. I barely do one player any percent. I'm not gonna lie. Because uh, even when I do sandbox races, I do it in two-player because I'm allowed to. So I That's like okay. most of luncheon that I know how to do and know how to practice is just mostly spewerless. So and that makes sense. I was like, mm. oh man, I hope I remember luncheon. Yeah, I don't even know bingo routes. Don't give me that game nerd. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and, and, I don't know that. <laughs> and then you know, how did you feel like both? And this this question for both of you guys at the beginning of the race. Um, you know, with sand, we, we, we had some issues there in sand in the beginning. Um, I know, I think it was enemy that was waiting on the bird to come. Yep. Uh, and then, sure was. and then, <laughs> um, Jaxi for both of you guys, I know Saren and I were both kind of hollering a little bit like, wait, what? Hold on. Wait, what's <laughs> going on? And then Spetty took a death, oh, but damn. then backed it up in like the most swag way possible. Yeah, it was fantastic. I almost died on reverse Jaxi, and I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah Spetty, what, what what happened there? If you can kind of comment what happened on that Jaxi death. I mean, I just kind of, like, whiffed. I just hit the wrong spot. Oh, know. God. Rip. But then I had seen that backup movement before, so I was like, why not try that? So I just did it. And it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, GG's to both of you guys. I know, you know, this is kind of the start of all the CCG action coming up. Uh, Saren, what else do you have for the rest of the evening? Uh, sleep. sleep. That's okay. a good plan. Not gonna <laughs> yeah, we That's will be back. That's me too, actually. Tomorrow? I like, I made my... Yeah, it's just Go past midnight in. where I am. Uh, so now I made my lunch for work tomorrow, and then I was like, all right, time to get ready for gaming.
Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> nice. On, man. I, I appreciate you, you know, putting in the time here. I know it's been tough to schedule this race, but getting this race done is very cool. I really appreciate it from both of you. Yes, I'm glad I could yes. uh, be in a CC, another CCG event. I think my last one was the 16 star open and oh boy if none of you saw what happened in that race there was a oh there was a save and quit after bowser hit the first bomb i don't even know how that happened oh rip rip like, i had to go back in and throw bowser on the bomb again thank you so much <laughs> for playing my game right on well we are going to call it for the night the morning whatever time it is for you uh we're gonna go say hi to mr chip groovy because he is a beautiful beautiful man and he is back grinding the super mario 64 uh so go ahead and say hi to him make sure to follow the channel we will be back tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day and the there, next day there's a lot of tomorrow and the next day me. yeah i think we have like 45 or something hours of mario this week maybe 50 i don't know it's a lot of mario uh, so it's on, am I facing you next week? Um, I think. I don't know. I forgot okay. to look at this bracket. But <laughs> yeah, take the probably. Um, that should be okay. a good race. Yeah, hopefully. But yeah, everybody go say hi to Chip Groovy. I will see you all tomorrow at, I believe, 4... It is 4 o'clock. No, 4.45 UTC. Cool. So 11.45 a.m. Eastern. We'll see you then. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>